Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm gonna check the new Revenger 55mm quadcopter from Ishin. This is the FR Sky D8 version. Inside the box we're getting the instruction manual, the quadcopter, one set of spare propellers, some rubber bands to secure the battery, and some screws, a 400mAh 2S battery, a velcro strap, a screwdriver and a hex driver, and one set of velcro stickers. This quadcopter is featuring 11,500 kV 1102 motors from Ishin, a 600 TVL CMOS camera which is located on the bottom of the quadcopter so the propellers are not going to get in your field of view, and the camera angle is adjusted by just loosening or tightening this screw over here. On the right side of the quadcopter you can find the transmitter, this is a 25 mW transmitter with 48 channels. On the left side you can find a buzzer which is very useful with these tiny builds and some micro quadcopters doesn't feature a buzzer so this is a very good thing to have. On the top you can find the receiver, this is the D8 receiver and in the middle you can see the Ishin Tiny Cube which I've already reviewed on one of my videos. So it's powered by two 6 ampere ESCs and an SP Racing flight controller. On the top you can find the receiver, this is a D8 compatible FR Sky receiver. The included propellers are 38.1 mm propellers and these are the biggest propellers you can fit with this propeller guard. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is almost 50 grams, so it's a little heavier than my Flexa C Nano X which weighs only 35 grams. And these quadcopters are almost the same size, just this one doesn't have the propeller guards and this is made of carbon so it's lighter than this plastic frame. The weight including the battery is 73.55 grams so it's not a very light quadcopter and that's why the flight time is only around 3 minutes. The biggest problem in this design in my opinion is that the center of gravity is very very low and that's why I had a pendulum like effect with the Flex FC Nano X because you can see I also built it in a similar way. So I guess we are going to have the same issue with this quadcopter as well so don't expect to get a lot of acro action and it's mainly suited for calm indoor flying and also non-aggressive flying outdoors because the moment you're going to try to perform some acro it probably is going to crash. Binding the quadcopter to your Taranis is done by simply putting your Taranis on D8 mode, channels 1 to 8, hit bind and then just connect the battery while holding this button over here. You can see that the blue indicator was turned off and then it means that it was bound successfully. We also get an RSSI signal which is great and we just have to connect to Betaflight Flight to see that all the channels are configured correctly. It comes already pre-flashed with Beta Flight 3.1 and everything is configured now correctly. It is the channel map is TAER, then 1, 2, 3, 4. It comes with this presets mode. I'm going to change it to my favorite modes. And these are the default settings in case you mess something up. So you can have a look. The CLRX in, is enabled on your tree and SBUS is selected. Here are the PIDs. I'm just going to leave it on defaults for now and see if it will need some tunings after I'm going to take it for a test flight. On the back of the camera there is a button. If you short press it, it's going to flip the picture. So if your picture gets upside down, just short press it and it will fix this issue. And if you long press it for two seconds, it's going to switch between NTSC and palm. Setting the band and channel is done by pressing this button. If you short press it, it's going to set the channel. Right now it's set on channel 7. The farthest right is channel 1 and over here is channel 8. And the blue indicator indicates the band. Right now it's on band A. All the way to the left is F. And A7 means 5860. You can refer to the frequency table in order to match your desired channel and frequency. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take it for a test flight. And then in the end of the video, I'm going to tell you what I think about this quadcopter. So
flying the Revenger 55 wasn't an easy task and as expected it was like a flying pendulum and I could barely fly it at home. Outdoors it wasn't that bad and I crashed it a few times and it's actually pretty durable. What I recommend for you to do if you have this quadcopter and I will try to do it also probably later on is to remove the propeller guards and try to get the center of gravity a little bit higher because at the moment right now I don't think it's fly it flies well at all and even after PID tuning it's going to be a little bit hard for flying. The only reason I think to get one of these quadcopter if you want to experiment flying a tiny brushless quadcopter but for indoor flying it's not a great flyer and probably getting a brushed flyer would be a better choice. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this quadcopter feel free to ask it in the comment section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.